black holes. Black hole. Black hole. Black holes. Black holes are real. They exist. We observe them all the time. And not only do they exist, they shape the universe that we live in. Black holes are some of the most mysterious forces in the universe. Objects so powerful that they warp space and time itself, and nothing can ever escape their grasp. But scientists might have found something equally as powerful, and the polar opposite of these black voids, white holes. The not-so-evil twins of black holes have been a mystery to astronomy, but it appears scientists might have finally cracked the code on these strange massive objects. Join us in today's video as we take a quick dive into the unexplored depths of white holes. Black holes remain one of the most fascinating and terrifying phenomena in the universe. These objects are a result of massive dead stars that collapse from the immense pressures of their own gravity, creating an object whose gravitational pull is so powerful that not even light can escape its grasp. Since they don't emit any light, black holes can't be seen directly with a telescope. So, NASA scientists had to study certain regions of the universe to try and pinpoint one of these black holes. They discovered that the tiny core of a galaxy called M87, which is located some 50 million light years away, had a spinning maelstrom of hydrogen gas around it. These super hot particles were spinning at an incredible 1.2 million miles per hour. But for some reason, something was preventing them from violently being thrown apart in all directions. The colossal mass at the center of M87 was a black hole, and one of the largest ever observed, as it must weigh as much as 3 billion suns to hold the entire galaxy together. But simply being able to hold an entire galaxy together with its powerful gravity isn't all a black hole is capable of. New Zealand mathematician Roy Kerr, using Einstein's equations on gravity, postulated that if someone were to get pulled into the event horizon of a black hole, they wouldn't simply be pulled into an eternal dark abyss. He believed that they might be sucked down a tunnel, known as an Einstein-Rosen bridge, and get shot out a white hole in a parallel universe. He demonstrated that a spinning black hole would collapse not unto a single subatomic point, but into a ring of fire, such that if a space probe is sent through the ring of fire, it wouldn't be crushed by the immense gravity, but would emerge unscathed through the Einstein-Rosen bridge and out a white hole. An Einstein-Rosen bridge is what has been widely termed in mainstream media as a wormhole, a cosmic shortcut connecting two distant parts of the same universe, or even two parallel universes. But the question is, what is a white hole? Well, according to renowned physicist Michio Kaku, a white hole is the stellar opposite of a black hole. In the same way nothing can ever escape the event horizon of a black hole, nothing can ever enter the event horizon of a white hole. It is believed to be a stellar object that constantly spits out energy and light. But there is so much controversy in the science community as to the existence of a white hole and whether they can even exist in the universe at all. Roy Kerr's theory that a black hole in this universe may lead to a white hole in another universe through a wormhole isn't that far-fetched logically, but it is scientifically hard to prove. Scientists all over the world have found hundreds of equations from Einstein's equations on relativity that support the possible existence of wormholes, but they all agree that wormholes would be incredibly unstable, and since they would have to exist in regions beyond space and time, intense subatomic radiations would instantly disintegrate anything or anyone who dares enter. The debate amongst physicists regarding wormholes and white holes is beyond complex, because both phenomena exist within quantum levels of the universe. Einstein's equation, which is the leading theory for studying the observable universe, only works where gravity is the ultimate force and does not account for subatomic forces. As such, a theory is needed that not only accounts for subatomic particles and quantum mechanics, but merges both quantum theory and gravity. In essence, to solve the puzzle of wormholes and white holes, we need an all-encompassing theory of everything. The theory of everything? In modern science, all the theories and laws of physics that have been used and are still in use in understanding the observable universe stem from two basic fundamental theories. First is Einstein's theory of gravity, which revolutionized our understanding of the cosmos, where large objects and phenomena are involved. This covers the planets, galaxies, black holes, and even the Big Bang. The second fundamental theory is the quantum theory, which opened up a whole new level of understanding of microscopic subatomic particles and quantum radiations. 
But the cosmic joke here is that both theories couldn't be more different than fire and water, such that even the greatest minds, including Einstein and Heisenberg, couldn't unify both theories into a foolproof model. Both theories use different physical principles and mathematics to describe the state of the universe, one in the cosmic and the other in the microscopic. But fortunately, there is a theory that serves as a great candidate that could be used to study beyond the event horizon of black holes, as well as prove the existence of wormholes and white holes. This theory has been referred to as superstring theory, and it seamlessly unites the theories of quantum mechanics and Einstein's theory of gravity, which is needed to solve the problem of wormholes and prove the possibility of white holes. Simply put, superstring theory states that subatomic particles are really just vibrations of a superstring, with each vibration corresponding to particles found in the universe. It states that the universe is basically a symphony of vibrating strings, such that as a string moves in time, it warps the fabric of space-time around it, producing the multitude of different phenomena we observe in space today. These include black holes, galaxies, wormholes, and other exotic solutions contained in both Einstein's equation and those found in quantum mechanics. A 10-dimensional universe. One fascinating thing about superstring theory is that they cannot vibrate in a typical four-dimensional universe, but rather they vibrate in 10 dimensions. A four-dimensional universe is the current model with which the universe is observed. It includes length, width, depth, and time, and we're currently unable to observe any other dimensions beyond these. Imagine some fish in a pond. To them, the pond is their entire universe. They can move forward, backward, sideways, and maybe even down, but they cannot surpass the barrier on the surface of the pond. To them, nothing exists above the surface of the pond, and they are unable to observe whatever may exist beyond the pond's surface. But when it rains, they can observe ripples on the surface of the water, proving that there is indeed something beyond the surface. And although they can observe these ripples, they are still unable to go beyond the surface, as any fish that does manage to break the surface would be unable to survive. In the case of the fish, they wouldn't be able to breathe air and would die. But in our case, we would be in uncharted regions of hyperspace, where unstable subatomic radiations would tear us apart. The same goes for us as with the 10 dimensions of superstring theory. This might seem far-fetched, but it is the only reason why superstring theory can unify both forces of gravity and quantum physics. A 10-dimensional universe technically has more room to accommodate all the theories of gravity, as well as the subatomic physics of quantum mechanics in a way that a four-dimensional universe cannot. This is one reason why previous attempts to unify both theories failed, because a conventional four-dimensional universe cannot accommodate both forces into one mathematical framework. In other words, although we currently exist or observe the universe in a four-dimensional framework, we should be able to detect the ripples of these other dimensions when they vibrate. According to superstring theory, light is nothing but a result of vibrations rippling along the fifth dimension. And by adding more dimensions, we can easily account for and accommodate more forces, including the forces that would make wormholes and maybe even white holes possible. However, there is wide criticism of the superstring theory, whereby scientists state that if these other dimensions do exist, we should be able to observe them in the laboratory, which we currently do not. In science today, every single event in the universe from the most microscopic subatomic decay to even the mechanics of exploding galaxies is described in the four-dimensional numbers of length, width, depth, time, and not 10. The mathematics of the 10th-dimensional superstring theory are profoundly complex, and some physicists might even say beautiful. But so far, no one has been able to discover the mathematical equations needed to solve quantum black holes, and eventually wormholes, and maybe even white holes. So, until the smart minds solve the equations, it'll be best to hold off buying any wormhole tickets to visit our closest universe.